Okay, now I wanna show you what I think is the most powerful and awesome thing about Google AdWords. If you're inside any campaign, you wanna to go to this Dimensions tab. What it's gonna do is it's gonna show you all kinds of data that you can sort from, filter through, and look at from any campaign. So it's all the ad groups that fall under that campaign. Now Dimensions is awesome. You can find out so much powerful information about your campaigns and about the results from keywords to locations uh, to the different times and how things are happening. I'm telling you, you'll quickly discover this will be one of your favorite areas that you'll use in order to expand your results, optimize your results, and hopefully get more traffic, more conversions, more profit for your business through what you do in AdWords. So when we come into Dimensions, you can click this first View tab here, uh, the first drop down. And we have all different types of things we can pick from. Conversions, we can see category or name if we set those up. Labels if we set those up. Uh, some of these are things I didn't go over yet. You can come in here and play around. You'll figure them out for yourself. But what we want to look at first is, let's go geographic, okay? So I picked geographic. What it does is, it's going to take all the activity from this campaign. And, and this was the dummy campaign I set up. Uh, where I typed in traffic secrets, the domain, I let Google pick everything, all the broad keywords and everything. And I did that for a reason. I let it run just for a few days because I wanted to get some sample data to work with to show you some of these examples. And of course, show you why you don't ever want to use broad match. You'll quickly see why. So the campaign that was set up and the ads that were picked, uh, I mean, I set up the ad copy, but the keywords that were picked for it automatically by Google um, created these results over like two or three days. And I think I spent like 300 bucks on clicks and I just let it do its own thing just to see what would happen. Well, what we're looking at here is we're looking at the geographic filtering view in dimensions. And this is showing us uh, where clicks are coming from because this is based on activity. We really didn't make any conversions because I didn't even really have any conversion tracking set up. So this is just clicks. So if I sort by clicks, the most clicks down to the least clicks, um, kind of based on location here for what we're looking at, we see that United States, an unspecified region, created the most clicks, 23. And that's probably because it's unspecified. It was all lumped into one. But we can get down here into metro areas like New York. The New York City area produced nine of our clicks out of uh, a few hundred clicks that we generated so far from the campaign. But we can see Philadelphia, Maryland, New York, Texas. We can see all these things. Then we can see in Canada, we got some from uh, the Alberta region. We got a click. And each of these things, we can actually see what the click-through rate was, how much the cost per click was. But you can really drill down into specifics on where the action is coming from. And we talk about ultimately wanting to find our ultimate micro-targeted areas, which will help us not only in Facebook, which we're going to get into next in the next module about running Facebook ads, where that's all demographics. Unlike search, where we get to run our ads when people search for keywords, uh, when it comes to more broad networks like Google Display or for Facebook advertising, we don't get to show ads based on what people search for. We get to show ads based on their profiles, so it's more like what gender they are, age they are, location they're in, things like that. Well, we can get a lot of that information by reverse engineering our keyword activity, such as through Google AdWords, through search network. And that's why so far we're only focused on search network where people search for something in Google and then we show them our ads. Well, we're able to really hone in on these people, you know, the ones that are clicking the ads, and then ultimately the ones that will give us conversions, opt-ins or sales. So we can start building these kind of, you know, customer prospect avatars or profiles of our ideal micro-targeted people that are basically building our business and are generating the bulk of the sales in our business. So then we can expand all of the marketing that we do to try to get more of those people. So if you come into dimensions and you do the geographic view here, we can literally look by click at where all these clicks are coming from. Then of course we could look by click through rate and cost and everything else to figure out if those are people that are worth it or not. Now, once you get enough data, you may find that the clicks that come from, let's say people in Maryland are just worthless. They're just not converting into sales for whatever reason. You know, I talked about that camping gear example. You may find that people in Colorado or Utah or you know, California or someplace with mountains and better camping areas may produce you know higher conversions than people that may have also searched camping gear that are in you know florida or other areas 
uh, that aren't as great for camping. That's why you want to look for data trends and correlations uh, in your business. That's why data is awesome. As a digital marketer, as someone doing this stuff online, data is just awesome because we can really find these hidden clues and things that can help us make more money. And so dimensions and this area of, of reporting inside AdWords is so cool once you start getting data because it really helps you start figuring things out and finding little gold nuggets. So for example, with just the geographic part, and just like I said, we could find that, let's say, clicks and activity that come from Florida on camping gear keywords don't convert very well. Well, then we can go in and we can adjust the locations to exclude Florida. So we don't ever have our ads shown to people in Florida because we find that they don't convert, they don't make a profit. The more we can exclude areas on a geographic basis, that is, that don't produce profitable results, the more we increase our profits. And I hope you're getting that and fully understand that. When you use Google AdWords, it is such a powerful system. But what's so powerful about it is we can exclude the stuff that doesn't work or doesn't make money, and we can do more of the stuff that does work and makes us money. Optimization is how you're going to make more money from AdWords and even make it profitable at all. Most people try AdWords and they do some things and they can't turn a profit, they quit. But they don't realize they can come into, for example, this dimensions area, drill so deep into the activity, where people are coming from, what time of day, all that stuff, and how it's converting and what it's costing, and you can just cut the fat. What I mean by cutting the fat is start eliminating and excluding these areas and these trends that you know aren't going to be profitable. So you can do it starting with geographic location. Even if you're picking just the United States, you'll find certain states or certain cities that are creating the lower profitable results. So we'll exclude those. The minute we exclude those, the moment we now make more money from still targeting the US but being able to exclude those. So we can do it by click-through rate. We can see certain areas just aren't clicking as much as other areas. And statistics are incredibly predictive of future statistics. Now, it has to be enough data to make these determinations. And of course, results and data can change over time, but we can still get and see some correlations to help us make decisions. So geographic is one thing, super cool. You come in here, you poke around, and you can see conversion rate, click rate, all that by location. It'll help you to set up new campaigns, new ad groups by location. For example, if we find that there's one state or two states that are really producing a lot of great results, create a new campaign and only target those. And then really hone in your budget per day and everything else and the ads for that. So now we come down to having ads that meet the keyword from people in a certain location to a certain landing page. And we really start tightening everything up who they are, what they see, what they click, and where they go, and how they convert. And that's how we're going to make the most money and really maximize things. So you come into dimensions, you can view by geographic. Another cool thing is you come under here, and you view by search terms. Now, this is one of the reasons why I let Google just set everything up, because I knew this was going to happen, and I wanted to show you this as, as a result. So if you remember seeing some of the key words for the, that Traffic Secrets campaign that it made for me, it was like, start an online business, you know, online business, you know, it just had all kinds of things. I think it had the word evolution in there, because one of my landing pages or the, um, the, the name of the video series was called, you know, The Great Traffic Evolution, and then the landing page was slash evolution. So it pulled all these things. Well, so this is sorted by clicks. Here's the search term that's gotten the most clicks so far out of these hundreds of clicks. It's gotten 10. Hughes Net Business. And I think Hughes is like an ISP of some sort, and we could see it was a broad match. And so for whatever reason, Hughes Net Business got the most clicks and we actually spent $22 on that, those clicks. And, you know, I can guarantee you that they did nothing for my business if I actually sent them to a landing page where I was trying to do anything at all, uh, which I wasn't because the, a lot of times the conversion data will take longer to, to update. And uh, sometimes there's a longer cycle. Opt-ins usually right away. Sales obviously can take longer. But I just wanted to do this real quick in a few days just to show you some vague numbers for how keywords work so I could show you exactly what I'm showing you. So 
Hughes Net Business, I think it's an ISP. It doesn't have anything to do with my business. But here's the great one. Look at the second one. It's got like eight clicks. Cost me 10 bucks, whatever. Pokemon Evolution Chart. This has nothing to do with like how to help people get more traffic or, or internet business or anything like it. So it's a complete waste. Uh, the broad term of business got some clicks, but why would anyone want to ever you know, run ads for a single word keyword? Because you don't really know, you know, what what all is included in that. Internet companies start a business online, you know, T1 business. I guess someone's looking for T1 lines, telecommunication lines for business, Yelp for business owners, German evolution, San Diego businesses for sale by owner, uh, BBB fashion online, business games. Uh, as, so as you can see here, None of these are relevant to what I would really want to target if I was trying to drive traffic to, uh, you know, the traffic secret site and to do things. That's why, of course, uh, you know, we have other accounts that are actually targeted towards what we're doing. But I wanted to set up some dummy ones just for an example here. But so this is why you never want to use broad match ever, because you'll get so many crazy, crazy terms uh, that'll show up and that'll waste your money. So you never want to do that. But what you can do with this on a positive note is you can actually come in here and when you do things properly, where you do it, the phrase match, the broad match modifier, and of course the exact match, um, you'll start to see other keywords, not for exact match, but for those other ones that you'll discover uh, were in the combinations of what they covered. So if an exact match is business online, you'll start seeing start a business online or businesses online for sale, things like that. And it'll give you ideas based on the data. You'll look at not only the click rates and the relevancy, but you'll look at the conversions and cost per conversion and figure out your profitability. And then you can move those into new campaigns and ad groups and start targeting them separately. So dimensions for viewing search terms is a great way to find new search terms and things for you to target in order to grow your traffic and of course your, your leads and your sales. So it's not just to come in here and see which ones are bad, but it's to see you know which ones are basically new ones that you can start like I taught you, like with the grow cherry tomatoes example, when we figured out that you know cherry was the next subset under grow tomatoes that expanded it to a three word keyword. Same thing, you can come in here and that's where you would find it. You'd start seeing, oh, you'd see what's that? Grow cherry tomatoes. And you'd see it got a lot of traffic and some good conversions and profitability. So you'd be like, oh, I wanna now move that into its own isolation. So you do the exact match for it, grow cherry tomatoes, then do another ad group for grow, you know, plus grow plus cherry plus tomatoes, as well as within quotes. And that's how you use that profit strategy that I was teaching you. But you come into dimensions, you look at search terms and you can find those. Now, another thing you can find by using this view of search terms for dimensions is you can find negative keywords. So you'll start to see things like, you know, like Pokemon, games, these things that you definitely don't want your ads to show for, even if they do include your keyword that you are targeting. So this is a good idea to f a good place, excuse me, to find good ideas of negative keywords. And then you'll want to add those at the campaign level. If it's a keyword phrase, I mean, if it's a part of a keyword that is, um, you know, applies to all of what you're doing. So for example, if it's games and you never thought, oh, I wouldn't want my ads to show for anyone searching for anything related to games, then you'd add games at the campaign level. If you're just excluding on an ad group level, then you would add it just to the ad group level. Um, a few lessons back when I was showing you how you could set up the ad groups and how you can add those negative keywords, you saw that there was the option where you add them to the group, which we did with the negative and then the exact match. Uh, or you can, over to the right, add them on that page as well uh, to the negative keywords. But you can find those under the campaign or ad group settings for whichever one you're trying to do. Now, another thing in Dimensions, which is super cool, is we can come in here and we can go to time and we can do hour of the day. Now, watch this cool thing. So I have it sorted by clicks, shows the hour of the day. Let me do... Uh, hour of a day here just to take it off of sort of by clicks. So zero, one, two, three, four, whatever. This is, you know, starting at midnight. That's the midnight hour. And uh, this is Google's Pacific time. So this is all happening in Pacific time, what these uh, stats are for. So if you, you know, you want to figure out what 
how it would affect on Eastern time. You'd have to adjust these by three hours ahead, obviously, for the difference in, like, let's say, California and Florida uh, to figure out where the data would fall during, a, like, a workday, you know, Eastern. Um, but basically, this, is, this gives it to you on Pacific time. So this is, like, midnight to 1 a.m., you know, from, during the 1 a.m. hour to 2 a.m., 2 a.m. to 3, so on and so forth, all the way down to, you know, late at night, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and then, you know, the last hour between 11 and 12. So this is very important because what you'll see when you start charting your conversions, you'll see, you'll see these hot pocket areas of activity. So for example, we just sort by clicks. If we had conversion data, we could click the conversion column and sort by conversions. And of course, sort by cost and cost per conversion. We can see what time of day is getting us the highest profitability. So we can see here the ninth hour of the day around 9 a.m. from like 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. where we got the most click activity. And then these other ones were later at night. But you'll find these areas and these correlations in your business where most of the sales happen and most of the profitability happens. And if that's the case, you know, some people find it's kind of, it's kind of equal. You get it all different times if you're targeting different countries and things. But by the way, the way I'm teaching you to do it, when you're going to target a individual country by individual campaign, you'll be able to come in here and it'll show like Pacific time, but you can make your decisions based on that data. You can find where the windows are of, let's say, if you target someone in Germany, where most of the activity comes from. And then uh, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how we can do ad scheduling to only show our ads during the times that we specify. And we again, it's another way to cut out the fat. We eliminate the areas uh, that aren't producing profitable results. Now, for some keywords, we'll find that it's kind of equally distributed. We're still getting traffic even late at night. And even though we get less clicks, let's say for a California targeted area because people are asleep, the, do, the clicks that we do get, people are still buying around the same rate, even though the numbers are all smaller. So it's still profitable. So it's fine. In that case, we'll leave the keyword or that ad group running 24 hours like it is already now by default. They all run 24 hours a day by default. But if we do start finding these, you know, certain trended areas like business hours, eight to five, or even in the middle of the day from noon to whatever, or even let's say a lot of our buyers for whatever a certain product is, they buy just at night. They don't buy during the day. They typically make that decision or that conversion more at night. Whatever it is, we'd want to find out if there's that, you know, find out if that is really happening over enough data. And if it is, then we cut the fat by scheduling that keyword ad group to only run during the hot times when we're the most profitable. By making a decision like that, we immediately make more money in our business because we're eliminating all the areas, the other areas that are less profitable. So it's yet another way to make more money from AdWords. But come into dimensions once you get some data and you can really look through and find these cool things. It's great.